Carbon Centauri is a great printer, especially for the price. But I want to show you a mod that costs less than $30, has only two parts, and that will greatly improve the reliability of your carbon. After this mod, it's nearly as reliable as my X1C, which cost four times the price. So the carbon has a runout sensor, but it's just a basic switch. If your filament jams, has a tangle, or gets stuck at the end of a roll thanks to an overambitious piece of tape, your carbon will go on happily printing nothing, ruining your print. If you don't want all the nerdy details, I've left timestamps below where you can skip to how to build and install it. When I was researching a solution, I came across this relatively inexpensive runout sensor from Big Tree Tech that also has a movement sensor inside. Unfortunately, this isn't supported by the carbon because there's no firmware or even a place to plug it into the mainboard. But the carbon does have another way to control it, which is an open and relatively well-documented WebSocket connection. Because I always have ESP32 dev kits laying around, I thought this would be the perfect choice for interfacing with the Big Tree Tech runout sensor. If you're not familiar with ESP32, it's a microcontroller that can connect to Wi-Fi and is programmable with Arduino libraries. They cost between $2 and $10 for a basic dev board. The Big Tree Tech is a pretty simple device. It has four wires, power, ground, runout signal, and movement signal. The runout signal on both the Big Tree Tech and the carbon work the same way. Five volt power goes in, and when filament is present, you get a 3.3 volt signal, which is referred to as a high signal. If that wire ever goes to ground, otherwise known as zero volts or low, then there's no filament. This means we can effectively pass the signal through to the carbon and have no change to its default behavior. The filament movement sensor works a bit differently. Its signal alternates between high and low every time it detects 2.8 millimeters of filament movement. This is normally something you would configure in Clipper or Marlin, and it would then figure out if the filament didn't move when it should and pause the print. We don't have access to the firmware or even a way to get that value into the carbon. So my workaround is to keep the time on the ESP32 and if the value hasn't swapped, send a message to the carbon to pause the print. This is an imperfect science. Since we don't know how much filament should be flowing, we have to guess. The carbon only reports its speed in terms of percentage, and therefore we don't know the flow. So I had to implement various workarounds, like increasing the timeout on the first layer and adding a buffer after printing starts. I'll revisit this later to make it more robust, but for now, it's working okay. I ended up getting a little carried away, and I built the whole web interface. Everything is published on my GitHub and MIT license, so feel free to fork it or send a PR. I think in the future, I might attempt to use this to also send images to an AI spaghetti detection service like Octo Everywhere or Obico. I could even have it show up as a device in Home Assistant. So anyway, here's how to build your own. First, open your drawer of spare ESP32 dev kits. If you don't have an ESP hoarding issue like I do, you can use my affiliate link below to buy one. Almost any ESP32 will work, but I prefer the S3 models because they're a lot faster. The only other thing you need is a Big Tree Tech SFS 2.0. The total cost should be less than $30. Now you have a choice to make. You can wire the Big Tree Tech as a replacement for the original runout sensor, or simply disable the original. If you disable the original runout sensor, the software in the ESP32 will attempt to pause as soon as you run out of filament, rather than waiting for the filament in the Bowden 2 to run out. To replace the original, you'll also need some JST XH connectors. I got this PIVA kit a while back and it's been great, but I'll also link some JST extension cables you can cut up and build a harness. But here's my disclaimer. If you hook your own wires up to the Elegoo, you may be voiding your warranty, and if you're not comfortable with wiring, you may create a dangerous short circuit or something. So do this at your own risk. The carbon supplies five volts and ground through the runout sensor wire, which we can use to power both the ESP32 and the Big Tree Tech SFS 2.0. That's this wire here, but make sure to measure with your multimeter. If you'd rather not wire yours directly to the carbon, you can also just power it from USB. The SFS will run with either 3.3 or five volts from the dev kit. The blue wire from the SFS is the runout wire. It should go to pin 12 in the ESP32 and the pin on the opposite side of the 5 volt on the runout sensor wire. The green wire goes directly from the SFS to pin 13 on the ESP32. And that's it for the wiring. The SFS has M3 holes if you want to bolt it in place of the original. I also print a little housing. I'll link the files for the model below. Once you've got it mounted, press this little nub on the filament sensor to load the filament. I found that it can be a little tricky. I hope that Big Tree Tech will improve this in the future. Now all that's left to do is flash the firmware. It's pretty easy. Just plug in your ESP32 into your USB and head over to my GitHub. There's a link to a web tool that will flash it right from your browser. You can also manually install it using Platform.io, which is a VS Code extension. Once it's flashed, it will become a wireless access point. Connect to the network, open your browser, and type in 192.168.4.1 to get to the web interface. Go to the settings page and set your Wi-Fi SSID and password and the IP address of your Centaur Carbon. In the future, I can make this automatic, but I haven't implemented that yet. And that's it, you're done. 
The next thing is just to see if it works. All right, so we're printing away. We're about to test if this works for the first time. And I'm going to simulate a clog by preventing the filament from moving. Tightening it up. It's trying to move. So at some point the gear should stop. Oh! It worked! So that's pausing. A little blue light down there means that it's working. Filament is flowing again. And the print is restarted and recovered. And there we have it. One finished print. And it uh, recovered nicely. I don't see any evidence of where it stopped. And that's it. So let me know if you have any ideas for future enhancements. And I hope this saves some of your prints. Bye-bye.